Do we? Uh, who do who, Iowa's got Purdue? So, yep. is this a uh, how how are we feeling about this one? Uh, a little nervous. Not gonna lie, because Jeff Brom has that Iowa's number since he's been at Purdue and hired in 2017. You know, I think Iowa has are they one and they're one and four against him where they got the one win in 2019 in Kinnick, but you know, Brom, his style of play and how aggressive he is, it's give, it's given Iowa issues and Iowa, they like to sit back in their zone and Jeff knows how to attack said zone. And he's always had, um, he's, she's hit her head. Um, he, his, the zone, he has Iowa zone figured out and he's able to move the ball and he's aggressive and he puts a lot of pressure on this Iowa offense to match him blow for blow. Luckily, David Bell is not playing um, this year because I have nightmares from that guy. Yeah. Well, I, you, you do realize this is a Charlie Jones revenge game. Which and that, sure and you were going to get to next, which probably might be, is that might be scarier than Rondale Moore. We don't know. Um, I, I think the Charlie Jones revenge factor is a lot scarier than David Bell okay. because da- David Bell you know, he put up, I think, two touchdowns last year in Kinnick, two the year before uh, during the COVID year for that first game in West Lafayette. But, yeah, to your point, this is a Charlie Jones revenge game. This this is, hey, look what you could have had, and look what I'm doing right now. I think he's a semifinalist for the, um, the Blitnikoff Award. And, you know, he the fact that he didn't even get a scholarship offer from Iowa when he left the University of Buffalo, he had to walk on at Iowa and then earn his stripes and then still not get the attention that he had when Iowa saw what he was as a returner in the punting game. And they just never got him this ball on offense. So Charlie Jones is going to be pissed off. He's going to be excited, but then also in return, this Iowa secondary, they're going to be excited and they're going to be ready to roll too. Cause they know it's a Charlie Jones revenge game. Everyone in the stadium knows where Purdue's going to try to go with this ball. They're going to try to go to number 15 in white. So I think this Iowa secondary, they're going to have a, a, a little bit of a pride to try to make sure that Charlie doesn't take this game over. And also the fact that Purdue kicked Iowa's ass over these last, these last you know, f- five years. Um, they're going to try to do it again, and they're going to try to eliminate the Hawks from the season. Because if Iowa goes four and five after this game, you can pretty much, you know, officially, officially put a fork in them and say they're cooked. Purdue still has a shot at getting the Indy. It's not great. Um, and then also but not, what Iowa has to do is they have to ha- make O'Connell throw the ball and get some turnovers off him because when he's had a clean pocket this year and he doesn't have any turnovers, Purdue wins a lot of games. But when he gets a little aggressive, he has a fumble, he has an interception or two, you know, bad things happen. And that's what Iowa has to do to win this game. They got to turn Purdue over, I think, at least twice. And then also, they have to continue with the offensive line continuity in the running game that they had last week. Because that, that was the biggest takeaway from the Northwestern game is they were able to run the ball and establish themselves at the line of scrimmage. And when they're able to do that, they're able to run the offense that they, that they run. And if they can't do that this week, if they can't turn Purdue over, it, it could be another ugly game. When, when Iowa and Purdue play for the Hawks. Yeah. Well, and that game's at 10 o'clock on FS1. So bright and early for you. But yep. Yeah, I, you, you're right. I think I'm, I'm sure Iowa will play that zone, have a, have a cover over Charlie Jones, make sure they know where he is at all times. Mm-hmm. And it's a place that Iowa – and they're going on the road and it's a place they haven't played very well either where they've, I believe they've lost their last two games. They've played there. I believe they lost there the first game of the year in 2020. And then in 2018, they lost as well. Correct. You know, in 2020, it was the David Bell show in 2018. It was the Rondell Moore show. Uh, and hopefully this year, like we said, it's not the Charlie Jones show. Yeah. And Purdue's a three and a half point favorite. So. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I that think, really, they're only getting three and a half at home. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it goes into what you were talking about with O'Connell is, is he likes to give the ball away. 
And Iowa, Iowa likes to take the ball away. So I think sure. that plays into it. I think this is going to be a low scoring game. I think if, I think the lower this score is, I think the more it favors Iowa because I think it goes back to what, what Urban Meyer said with an offense like this is just, just get two first downs. You're in field goal range. And, and maybe one drive, try to get an explosive play. Maybe we'll see a trick play out of it. I think what Iowa needs to do two more on offense. I haven't watched their last couple of games, but they are so, they're so vanilla. They don't use any motion. They don't, there's no creativity within the offense. And that's something that they need to find ways to get more, more of. Correct. Yeah. They just, they line, they line up in their sets and this is where we're at. So the defenses know, okay, when Iowa gets in this personnel, when they have, you know, two by one to the left, they know what small group of plays they can run. There's no window dressing. There's no creativity, which puts stress on the defense. In return, that's what Purdue does. And I think, you know, that just comes down, like we've said before, that just comes down to coaching and Brian Ferentz not putting his players in a good spot. But there's always, you know, there's always that one game each year where Iowa, they do that. They send guys in motion pre-snap. Um, they, have, they have a different formation sets. You know, they're, take, they're taking deep shots, some trick plays, and you sit back and you say, why can't we do that year-round? Because, let's be honest, this Iowa defense, in my eyes, is a national championship caliber defense. If they just had some protection from, from this offense. Um, you know, I'm not going to say they're as good as Michigan's defense because they're not. Michigan's, they have just, Michigan has thoroughbreds out there on the defensive line. I mean, they're built like an NFL team, but if this Iowa defense had a little protection from an offense, you know, this, this defense could win you, could win you a national title with just how opportunistic that they are. If they, had, how, the, if they had the 2019 Iowa offense, this, they, they would be dangerous. Very dangerous. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. With with Stanley, Amir Smith Marset, you know, Alaric Jackson, Tristan, Tristan Wirfs, Tyler Linderbaum, Tyler Goodson. Um, Charlie Jones wasn't on the team yet. Yeah, they 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 would they would be where Illinois is right now. How Illinois, you know, seven and one in top top in the West. Um but yeah, like I said, like I said before, and I'll say it again, you just gotta have O'Connell turn the ball over a couple of times. And if you can do that, and if you can take advantage of that on a short field, good, good things will happen. And then, you know, Brock Osweiler said this last week in the broadcast, and it's a little crazy, it's a little far-fetched. But if this Iowa offense can get some confidence and some continuity going, and this defense is playing the way they are, why can't Iowa mess around and win some games towards this end of the year and change some things in the Big Ten West? You know, why, why, why can't they? I'm not saying they're going to, but if they're able to get some confidence going, a little more continuity on offense, and they're able to extend drives, and Phil Parker's able to make the adjustments that he makes, you know, hey, they could uh, they could maybe get to six wins at the end of the year, maybe six, maybe six, maybe seven. Yeah, well, they just got to win two more, and they're bowl eligible, and we'll go 